My parents were both um, botanists, sort of, not professionally, but they were botanically inclined. And I spent my weekends and my afternoons just roaming around the neighborhood, climbing trees and so forth. My father was half an entomologist, I mean, he was in plant protection, so he knew a lot about insects and how to kill them. The colony's down there, but, but uh, there'd be exit, there would be forging tunnels all over here. Okay, let's go here. I was interested always why some species cooperate, individuals get together to make a society, and here was a more complex society. There's some cooperation between different species called mutualisms, right? And I was fascinated by that. So this is the colony. If you just stomp on it. Oh well. So this is uh, one of the largest uh, insect societies that are known. There's uh, one queen, perhaps several queens. And they are tended and assisted by maybe 5 million, 10 million workers. Workers come in different sizes. There's some really large ones like these over here that are called soldiers. They're mostly in defense of the colonies. They're not particularly adept at growing the fungus garden. For example, this one I just got cut here and I'm bleeding now. That was one of the soldiers who bit into my skin. Yeah, so underneath here on this mound that the ants have excavated, say over the last five years, perhaps 10 years, uh, they have built this huge metropolis underground that consists, I would estimate, of perhaps 500, perhaps 1,000 fungus gardens of the kind that I have in my laboratory too. It's about football-sized uh, fungus gardens that the ants have constructed underground here. They go from, say, here in this area about a meter deep, maybe to about 15 meters deep. So that would be, you know, almost 50 feet deep. That'd be the deepest garden. And some of the tunnels that the ants are constructing reach actually much deeper, usually to the groundwater level, from which the ants bring up moisture to moisten these gardens in summer. The, these gardens are grown on leaf material that the ants are carried to the nest, usually through an extensive tunnel system that ramify out in all direction. So the ants cut the leaves on trees or on shrubs near the ground carry it above ground on their trails that they construct to these tunnels and then underground until they reach the fungus chambers where the ants process the leaf material and then they insert them in those, into those gardens. The fungus grows, makes, makes nutritive structures and these are rich in nutrients. They're high in protein, they're high in sugars and they can sustain the growth of the ants themselves as well as the larvae. Much of what me, fascinates me about biodiversity is, is the intricacy of the interactions. The, the, the ant has been modified evolutionarily in the response to the interaction with the fungus, and likewise the fungus has been uh, uh, changed, modified evolutionary in response to the interaction with the ants. In, out of the interaction of these many individuals, each following individual decision rules that they have evolved with, emerges an entire new kind of property that did not exist if fewer individuals or one individual were to express this behavior. For me, the big remaining questions are is uh, to understand better the, the principles, how these ants are able to manage their crop together with beneficial microbes. So there's good microbes in soils that humans sometimes have used to combat the really bad microbes that are detrimental to the growth. And that is the kind of tricky that human agriculture has discovered only in the last you know, 10 or 20 years. And the ants have figured this out 50 million years ago and they've used that to their advantage during their entire evolutionary history. You know, and I don't mind them crawling over me, you know, I sort of got used to it. A few years ago, I did this massive survey where I you know, dug up 200 nests throughout Texas of this ant. I did this all by myself, usually on the weekend, whenever my family lets me go. And uh, sometimes I had to dig very deep. And then when you're digging for a long time, eventually you have them all over. Because you're, you know, they're, you're in a big hole, sometimes I'm on the side and there's ants and they have them crawling all over the head. I guess that's a kind of occupational hazard that uh, you have to get tolerate when you get used to that. <laughs>